Hello world. I'm Gavilan Steinman and this is On Shoulders TV. In the last episode, I went over a problem that I'm having with this foot. Now that I added all of the wires that I need for this foot, the foot is no longer flexible. It's no longer able to orient itself with the environment. It's practically rigid. So I went over the problem asking for you to comment on solutions. And in one week, I got so many ideas coming in that they outnumbered all of the ideas that I've had on my own for a month. And these, these are really good ideas. In the next episode, I want to go over all of them in depth. But in this episode, I really want to focus on a trend that I was seeing with these ideas. Just as an example, Knight8365 says, the wire you have on there is pretty thick. Most sensors are generally quite low powered. Measure the current to the sensor in different modes. Possibly you might be able to use something like wire wrapping wire, which is thin and very flexible. And Mark Haywood, on my blog, he wrote, you could use motor wires that would be much less rigid than wires you're using now. And, and it goes on, the uh, Beware Eyewear says, first priority is to see how many wires can work. As others have said, get really thin, flexible wire and try one, two, three, etc. You may be able to, and, and he, he goes on. I feel like I need to rig an experiment. Uh, Mark Haywood mentioned motor wire. So I found this magnet wire and I found it in 30 gauge. It's pretty thin. I mean, really thin. I'm excited about this stuff. 26 gauge, but it's unshielded. So it's a little bit thinner and 22 gauge, which I, I probably won't use. I feel like I need to rig this test to compare this 30 gauge wire to what I currently have, which is the 26 gauge shielded ethernet wire. So I, I looked online to see if there were tests that you could do to measure the flexibility of a wire. And I didn't really find anything. Maybe there's an industry standard, but I was unable to find an industry standard. So I put some thought into it and I, I came up with a test. Imagine a pendulum, a pendulum that swings, and as it swings, it loses energy. Now imagine tying a wire to that pendulum and having the wire bend as the pendulum swings, and then measuring the amount of energy lost with the wire attached to the pendulum compared to without and comparing one wire attached versus another, a thicker wire, a thinner wire. So I feel like I need to, to create this test bed to measure just that. So let's get started.
So now that we have our test bed, let's, uh, let's use different types of wire, the, the 30 gauge, the 26 gauge, and then the shielded 26 gauge, and see how they compare. So we've done our tests and I've crunched the numbers and here they are. Uh, A is the first swing, B is the second, and C is the third swing. And I ran all of these tests three times to verify consistency. They were consistent. We noticed that in the control, we don't lose that much energy. In the second test, the 26 gauge shielded the, that cat cable, that cat5 cable, uh, we lose a lot of energy. With two of them, we lose even more. Moving to the 26 gauge, we don't lose as much energy with just 26 gauge unshielded magnet wire. We don't lose as much energy. With two of them, we lose roughly the same amount of energy as one 26 gauge shielded. And now here's where it gets exciting. With this 30 gauge wire, notice that we lose very, very, very small amount of energy with one wire. Same with two, same with three. In fact, we can, we can plot a trend here. It's a, it's a pretty consistent trend. And we can predict with this trend, I mean, with a lot of uncertainty, but I'm going to predict that six wires, roughly six of these 30 gauge wires, are about as flexible as one 26 gauge shielded. To me, that is extremely exciting, especially if, if we use the idea of, let me find it here, Flemish 4, his idea of uh, using really soft wire that don't restrict so much, they should be bowed outward to allow movement, especially if we bow these wires outward so that they don't restrict movement very much. I think, I think this will work. I really, I think it, it will, it'll work. Um, but I, in this episode, I really just wanted to present these results. And I'm not saying that I'm going to go with six 26 gauge or six 30 gauge magnet wires and just leave it at that because a lot of different people had a lot of really good ideas that weren't 
this wire. So I want to go into them in the next episode and maybe totally redesign this foot. I don't, I don't know yet. Um, but in this episode, I just wanted to present these findings in case you find yourself in a situation where you need flexible wire for one of your robotic projects. So again, thank you for sending in all of the, the comments and thank you for watching these videos and I'll see you next time.